Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a cool artist tour guide. I'm currently in the Irish Room, which is a room that celebrates literacy and reading. And I'm about to read you a story today. The Gift from St. Nicholas Written by Dorothy Lochner Illustrated by Maya Dusikova And narrated by Sarah Maynard It had been snowing for over a week. Day after day, night after night, the wind had blown high snow mountains against the houses and the village was white and cold and silent. At first, the villagers tried to keep the streets and paths cleared, but the snow kept falling faster and faster, heavier and heavier. Finally, everyone gave up. No one came to buy the shopkeeper's groceries or the baker's bread. The postman couldn't deliver any mail. Mrs. Kramer's back ached, but she couldn't get to the doctor. And Grandfather Gregor sat alone in his warm kitchen, wishing his children could visit. Since the villages could do nothing, they just stayed in their houses and watched the snow pile higher and higher. Anna and Misha watched too. They blew peepholes in the ice flowers on the window and stared out at the storm. It was St. Nicholas Eve, and the children were worried. I'm tired of being trapped inside, said Misha. St. Nicholas Day won't be any fun if we can't get out to see Grandfather Gregor or any of our friends. If only St. Nicholas would blow a path through the snow. Then let's wish for it, said Anna. On St. Nicholas Eve, if you wish hard enough, whatever you wish for is supposed to come true. So they shut their eyes and sent their wish out through the peepholes in the ice. The wish flew past barns and sheds, between the bare lilacs, out across the fields and into the woods. It flew through a spruce and cedar and pine and up a hill where it landed on St. Nicholas's beard. And from his beard to his ear, it was just a short hop. St. Nicholas listened to the wish and nodded. He went to his storeroom to choose gifts for the villagers. Apples, nuts, chocolate, and toys are not what the villagers need most this year, he mumbled to himself. Gingerbread? No. Not even rocking horses or nutcrackers. This year is different. They need something special. He searched and searched through the entire storeroom until he found it. It was an old thing, not much to look at, but it was exactly right. In a flurry of rustling papers and crackling ribbons, he wrapped the shabby old thing. He packed it well. Then St. Nicholas pulled on his mittens, tied on his scarf, strapped on his skis, and set out. Silently, he sped down the hill, past pine and cedar and spruce, out across the fields, between the bare lilacs, and into the sleeping village. Anna and Misha heard a strange noise and woke up. Was there someone outside? They raced to the window. Look what St. Nicholas brought, whispered Anna. In the middle of the village square stood a big, dark, mysterious sack. Soon the people in the other houses also noticed the mysterious sack. What could it be? Who is it for? Is it for me? Curious, they grabbed their shovels and began to dig paths through the snow. They shoveled snow for anyone who was too old or too weak. The children helped too. They all laughed and called to each other as they dug their way towards the sack in the middle of the square. Shoveling made them warm. With rosy cheeks, they stood around the ch sack and chattered excitedly. It could be a baby elephant, said Misha. No, that's crazy, said Anna. It must be an oven, said the baker. Or a cask of raspberry juice, said the shopkeeper. Better that it be cough syrup, offered the doctor. A sack full of hay, suggested Grandfather Gregor. Oh no, it is certainly a parcel, said the postman. A child sighed. I hope it is a doll. A huge doll that can dance and sing. Let's just open it and find out, said Misha. So they did. Inside the sack was a huge package, gift-wrapped and tied with a bow. Under the paper, there was a box. Inside the box was a slightly smaller package, also wrapped and tied with a bow. And inside that box, another. The paper crackled, the ribbons waved, and the boxes got smaller and smaller. The villagers laughed as they unwrapped each box. At last, all there was left was a small, plain package. This present isn't big enough for us all to share, murmured the villagers, disappointed. What a lot of work for nothing. But they unwrapped it, with the children crouching and the adults peering curiously over their shoulders. 
A teapot, they cried, astonished. What good is a teapot? A teapot is good for making tea, suggested Anna. Yes, agreed Grandfather Gregor. We'll brew some tea. You may all come to my house. It's nice and warm in my kitchen. The pot held enough tea for everyone. The baker sliced some fresh bread. The grocer laid out apples and tarts. Anna and Misha brought their old nutcracker and a basket of nuts. The doctor gave Mrs. Kramer some medicine that eased her aching back, and the postman blew a peephole in the ice flowers on the window. We should send St. Nicholas a thank you letter, he said. And Grandfather Gregor sat smiling, for now his warm kitchen was filled with people. On their way home, Misha said to Anna, You know, this turned out to be a wonderful St. Nicholas Day after all. Yes, said Anna, and we did get our wish. St. Nicholas may not have blown a path through the snow, but he did find a way to bring us all together. The end.